Google Shopping ads have changed completely forever in 2023. And in this video, I want to go over my exact Google Shopping ad strategy I'm using across 10, 20, 30 different e-commerce brands. We're gonna be going over some things like the rule of seven, which will then drive us towards a standard shopping campaign strategy, as well as a performance max campaign strategy, specifically for the shopping ad side of things. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna be giving away exactly why this Google Shopping ad strategy works and how you can alter it to fit your e-commerce brand. So, this is definitely one video you're gonna wanna watch until the end. But let's start off with talking about the rule of seven. Now, what is the rule of seven? In simple words, the rule of seven basically says that it takes roughly seven different connections between your advertisement and a potential customer before they actually even consider purchasing from you. And as the average order value of your product increases, the rule of seven becomes a rule of 14, 21, 28, 35, so on and so forth. Just because as the customer has to spend more money, obviously they're gonna think more about spending that money, unless of course they're like Jeff Bezos. So the reason why I'm referring to the rule of seven in a Google shopping strategy video is because this means our shopping campaign strategy needs to kind of be altered to fit this rule of seven approach and again not just because of the fact that it takes about seven different connections between your ad and a customer before they consider even buying from you but also because other competitors are increasing and it's just becoming more and more and more difficult to get that sale profitably on the first interact so the rule of seven really means that we can no longer just focus on that first interaction to get that first sale because most likely your customers will be coming back to your website two or three times or seven times before they consider even purchasing so this kind of drives us into the two different approaches for the google shopping strategy number one way is with standard shopping number two way is with performance max let's start off talking about the standard shopping strategy so right here on my screen i have a very big ad account currently pulled up which i'm handling under my google ads agency or marketing which if you're currently doing forty thousand dollars or more per month in revenue go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see if we can potentially work together and scale your brand to the next level but in terms of standard shopping and even the performance max the general approach is still the same you do not want to any longer just launch one performance max campaign or one standard shopping campaign with all of your products in it it doesn't matter if you have five products or five thousand products it's always better to segregate it based on two to three different things now for the sake of this example we're gonna stick to two because these two different ways are those that i currently use to scale all of the brands i'm working with but way number one for standard shopping as well as pmax is via the collections route now that's exactly what we're following here if you notice we have a few performance max campaign running here but i would do the same exact thing for standard shopping the reason why we have multiple different pmax campaigns here is because number one we have segregated them out based on the collection so this is a fashion e-commerce brand and they have different collections within this brand which we are targeting with each individual pmax campaign now as you can see the results are kind of all over the place there's few pmax campaigns running at a 1.64 extra wise some running at an 8.42 extra wise but the main thing is the segregation is allowing one campaign to do a 1.64 extra wise while the other campaign is doing a 8 extra wise because the reason why we take this strategic approach instead of just jamming everything inside one campaign altogether is because the jamming strategy really is unfair to a lot of your products now with this fashion brand there's about 20,000 different SKUs, and if we just jam 20,000 different SKUs together well there's a lot of SKUs that will barely ever even spend any money so to kind of battle that we have different collections for each shopping campaign or a performance max campaign and every single campaign right here gets different kinds of results if we change the time period to the last 30 days you can see that there's just various different kinds of results going on right here between search campaigns performance max so on and so forth but the first approach is the collection based approach the second approach which we're also doing here for some of the campaigns is the kpi based approach and when i say kpi i simply mean 
looking at a specific metric for your product. So if you have certain products where the profit margin for almost all of them is between $30 to $40, then you would want to put all of those products based on that KPI of profit margins inside its own standard shopping campaign or a performance max campaign. And this KPI can be different based on your needs. It could be the cost to fulfill that order so if it costs you fifty dollars to fulfill that order the cost of goods is fifty dollars then you would put those products inside its own pmax campaign or its own standard shopping campaign and so on and so forth just pick one kpi all of the products inside that one given campaign in this case we are doing that with performance max campaigns but either of these two approaches collection based or kpi based work now if you want a more in-depth video on this i've made other videos where i talk about a strategy for just testing a strategy for just scaling so on and so forth in fact you can check out my google ads playlist on my youtube channel the link is in the description below but that's kind of a generic approach for standard shopping or pmax campus now this is the important part and why this Google Shopping ad strategy is a bit different. We're not done yet with just segregation based on KPIs or collections. Nowadays, I'm taking it a bit further. So to illustrate this, what I want to do is I want to go inside one of the main campaigns, which is spending the most amount of money right here, which is going to be this campaign right here. So this one has spent $27,000 in the last 30 days. It's doing a decent job. And I want to go on over to asset groups because this is where this PMAX campaign strategy changes. Now, there's two different ways to go with your PMAX campaign specifically because you can't really do this part with standard shopping, which has to do with assets. The first way is by having a shopping only PMAX campaign. So in this case, a shopping only PMAX campaign would have zero assets in here so they would have zero images zero logos zero headlines and so on and so forth you basically put nothing in the pmax to force it to act as a shopping campaign and in this case the second strategy is to actually have some assets in there now we have been tested both having this pmax campaign without assets for this brand and having it with assets surprisingly this brand works better with assets hence why we have just gone ahead and just added the assets in but you want to always test both of these out with PMAX campaigns. That is the ideal shopping strategy, which it will lead you to because every ad account is different. I do recommend you try it with only shopping first, so no assets. So that's kind of the main approach that is different for PMAXs. These are two things you need to test, but the next thing that you definitely want to do with your shopping strategy, regardless of whether you use standard shopping or performance max is to add an audience signal now if you're one of the og followers you know i used to recommend that you never do something like this however 2023 is a brand new year and with a brand new year there's new strategy so with this new strategy what i'm actually finding more success with is adding an audience both for standard shopping as well as performance max but here's the big but you cannot just add any random audience in here hoping that it works. So instead, what you wanna do is inside the audience signal section, you want to add an audience of people who have already interacted with your brand in some way, shape, or form. So in this case, we have added the all checkouts for the last 540 days as one of the audience signals. And this could be changed to all add to carts, all purchasers, but make sure that this day's amount is a big amount because if your Google Ads account is fairly new, you don't have much data, then this is gonna take a long time for you to get good results. So it's crucial you pick a bigger time range here for it to work at the best possible capacity. But that's essentially what you wanna be doing for a PMAX campaign. I recommend one to three different audiences within the audiences section to really get the best results within your performance max campaign or your standard shopping campaign. But let's move on now to the standard shopping campaign side of things to show you exactly how I would do it with the audiences. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a standard shopping campaign on a brand new ad account for you guys. So I have a standard shopping campaign pulled up here on my screen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the audiences section because within the audiences section, you want to go ahead and add an audience based on observation basis. So what I mean by this is you'll see something like this here on the audiences section. You wanna click on edit audience segments because once you do that, then you will get these two options, campaign level or ad group level. We're gonna go ahead and choose campaign level because we wanna add these audiences on the campaign side of things. Now, at the very top, you'll see two different options. 
targeting or observation i recommend you go with observation so that this standard shopping campaign does not only go to these audiences because the main reason why we're even doing this in the first place is to make our standard shopping campaign algorithm or our pmax campaign algorithm much much smarter much quicker so for that to happen we need to let the algorithm observe these audiences now in this standard shopping i've added several different audiences and you can definitely give it a test However, if I were to recreate this standard shopping campaign, I would just add those people who have interacted in some way, shape or form with my website. So things like all converter, product viewers, shopping cart abandoners. I would even go as far to add in a customer list. I would even add in checkout people who abandon their checkouts. These are all ideal audiences you want to give a go within your standard shopping campaign or your performance max campaign. But again keep in mind no more than one to three audiences otherwise it's gonna confuse the algorithm a bit too much and as a result it might actually work against you instead of help you but again make sure to run it on an observation basis that's the key to success with this strategy right here but that pretty much sums up my entire general approach for shopping campus now Something that I wanted to discuss is basically the significance of this strategic approach when it comes to Google Shopping Ads and why this works in 2023 and onward. So simply put, it works because it helps the algorithm go out and find your audience at a much quicker pace instead of it just kind of relying on your products, the SEO you did on your products, the product titles, etc. It can now use these audience signals to then figure out what people are within these audience lists and then how it can go out and find similar audience members. So it really helps you kind of boost your results in a way. So it's considered a hack. Just for that hack, make sure to smash the like button down below and subscribe if this is the first video you're watching on my channel. But number two, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to now go above and beyond with your SEO for your product descriptions, for your product titles. I mean, of course you should still pay attention to them. Don't get me wrong. But with this approach, you can have something else on your side, just those people interacting with your business in some way you can use those to your advantage. Number three, it increases the chances of your algorithm for your ad account pinpointing that exact audience much, much faster. Again, it's going to speed up all of these things for you and it's going to make this very, very accurate. So you no longer are just getting a bunch of random people on your website who just consider the window shoppers. They click around on your website, but never purchase anything. That's really a big key because those kinds of people mess up your entire algorithm and mess up the data that you're getting. But again, if you're doing $40,000 or more per month in revenue, you need just a little bit of extra help to scale your brand to the next level. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. If you found any type of value in this video, I want you to click this video right here to watch me audit a Google Ads account live that has a bunch of different mistakes and it will show you exactly how I go about the process to turn around brands from doing four figures, five figures a month to multi six and multi seven figures per year.